Hello everyone, my name is Rochelle and today I will be discussing herniated nucleopulposus, also known as herniated disc or slip disc. But first, let's go back and take a look at the human anatomy of our spinal column. The human spine is made of 24 spinal bones called vertebra. The vertebra stack on top of one another to create spinal column. The spinal column gives the body its main upright support. From the side, spine form three curves. The neck, called cervical spine, curve slightly inward. The mid-back or thoracic spine curves outward. The outward curve of thoracic spine is called kyphosis. The low back, also called the lumbar spine, curves slightly inward. An inward curve of the spine called lordosis. The lumbar spine is made up of the lower five vertebrae. Doctors often refer to this vertebra from L1 to L5. The lowest vertebra of the lumbar spine, L5, connects to the top of the sacrum, a triangular bone at the base of the spine that fits between two pelvic bones. There's a joint on each side of the sacrum that connects the sacrum to the pelvis. This joint called sacroiliac or SI joint. Each vertebra is formed by round block of bone, called the vertebral body. The lumbar vertebral body is taller, bulkier, compared to the rest of the spine. This is probably because lumbar spine has to withstand the pressure from the body weight and daily actions, like lifting, carrying, and twisting. There are 24 vertebrae in the spine. These vertebrae are connected by several joints, which allow you to bend, twist, carry loads, and absorb shock. The main joint is a flexible cushion between two vertebrae called an intervertebral disc. The intervertebral disc is comprised of soft gelatin center surrounded by tough outer wall. When the gelatinous core pushes out through a tear into fibrous wall, the disc herniates, adding pressure to the surrounding of spinal nerves which causes pain. A herniated disc may be caused by simple wear and tear, of repeated movement over time, or disc degeneration with age Spiral discs lose some water content, making it difficult to support the load from above vertebrae. Other causes herniated discs may include long standing, trauma, stress fracture, congenital abnormalities. While it is possible for an intervertebral disc to herniate of any level of the spine, it most commonly occurs in the lumbar region of the lower back. Symptoms include pain at the site of the injury, pain numbness or tingling in the arms or legs, pain that worsens when bending, twisting, sitting, muscle spasm. In many cases, herniated discs recover without any intervention or through medical treatment. If non-surgical treatment have not improved the condition of the disc after six weeks, surgery can be done. Diagnostic testing result must also support that the herniated disc is treatable with surgery. The different types of surgery for herniated disc are open discectomy, endoscopic microdiscectomy, percutaneous discectomy, laminotomy, and laminectomy. In open discectomy, the herniating content that presses the nerve or the spine is removed. Other oppressing factors such as spinal stenosis are also managed. 
This procedure is considered as the most effective type of surgery for herniated disc. Under general anesthesia, a small incision is made over the center or right of the back where the herniated disc is located. Once herniating part is removed and pressure is relieved from the nerve, the incision will be closed. The endoscopic microdiscectomy is a type of surgical procedure for herniated disc like an open discectomy. But a smaller incision and an endoscope a microscope is used. Instead of cutting through the muscles and tissues, they are just separated to allow the passage of the endoscope. In this time, the same procedure is used as an open discectomy. But due to limited space such as technique, can't be used in everyone. Percutaneous discectomy treats herniated disc by reducing the size of herniation. In this surgery, a special tool is used to remove the herniating disc tissue by heating or scraping it. It is considered less effective than open discectomy and cannot be performed in all patients. Laminotomy and laminectomy are types of surgery for a herniated disc that are done to relieve the pressure over the spinal cord or nerve root. These options are executed in very large herniated discs or spinal stenosis, for example, due to arthrosis. In laminotomy, a part of lamina is removed. The lamina is a thin part of the vertebrae that encloses the spinal cord. In laminectomy, the entire lamina of the affected vertebra will be removed along with some thickened tissue. So guys, for the prevention, first, it is a must for us to know how to use a proper lifting technique for us to be able to support our spinal cord and prevent it from damaging. Always maintain a healthy weight and practice a good posture always, all the time, whenever we walk, sit, stand, and sleep. For the ladies, as much as possible, avoid to wear high-heeled shoes. And if it's happened to be that you sit in a long period of time, do not forget to do stretching once in a while. And do regular exercise to keep the muscles of our back, legs, and stomach strong. Lastly, stop smoking so there you go guys i hope that you learned something uh, about uh, herniated nucleophobosis until then thank you and see you